taking care of our health is of utmost importance, but what do we do when we simply cannot afford even a basic visit to the doctor or have quality health care in a hospital when we need it most? South Africa has been in talks about setting up a national health care system as well as lowering the costs of medical aid. For more on this, SABC News spoke earlier to the Acting Managing Director of the Board of Healthcare Funders of Southern Africa, Dr. Clarence Meany. The costs have been, first of all, a concern to all those who are in private health care, like us, mm. the Board of Health Care Funders, as you would know. Uh, is a membership organization of uh, medical schemes mm. uh, in Southern Africa. We, uh, our members are from the seven southern countries uh, around Southern Africa. And across the board, in all this region, across the board, we've seen the escalation of uh, healthcare costs. The, the, the reason for the escalation is multiple fold. We have uh, latest drugs that are coming up, like drugs referred to as the biologics, mm. that are new, if very effective, but very, very expensive. We've had an aging population that tends to demand uh, hospital care, uh, more intensive and mm. longer stays in hospitals. So there's a variety of causes, uh, but with universal health care, uh, we all feel that uh, we'll be able to go a long way towards alleviating that. In our lifetime, we'll see that. <laughs> we, hope, we hope so, because uh, the UN, led by its uh, unit, WHO, is pushing everybody mm. across the board in the whole world to move towards universal health care. Mm. So that, uh, like in South Africa, instead of us only uh, covering... 8% of the, uh, mm. uh, the 16% of the population, we should be able to, to, to cover the whole country when universal health care mm. is introduced. Yeah. The vast majority, at least one would hope, in yeah. the medium term. I, I want to talk about medical aids because it's, some, it's something that I think we all have this uncomfortable relationship with yes. in, in South Africa. It's, it's very expensive, as you know, and, yes. and, and, and at times it's difficult to understand, I think, for, uh, for people who use medical aids. But are we going to see a time, if we talk on the back, before we get to, to uh, the dream, are we going to see a time where the cost of it maybe comes a little bit down in South Africa? <clears throat> the Minister of Health has started working on uh, what they call low-cost options mm. to be able to attract more people to, to be involved in medical aids. Mm. Uh, this is an interim measure as we are waiting for the magic bullet that is NHI. Yeah. Uh, we as the private healthcare industry want to make our expertise mm. available to the Department of Health to make sure that all the areas in which we've been operating mm. over time, including uh, financing mm. and putting systems, modern systems together uh, to run healthcare are shared with the Department of Health for the benefit of uh, the whole country. What are your hopes for the NHI in the short and medium term? In the short and medium term, uh, with our support, I think, I and mean, the enthusiasm of the minister that mm. is well known, uh, we think it's a no from the nine uh, pilot sites, mm. the results coming out is that uh, things have started moving. Uh, there are, of course, uh, disturbing trends about uh, resources being depleted mm. and in some cases uh, in nefarious ways. And that's mm. the money, in our opinion, that is supposed to be set aside yeah. for, for programs like the NHI. Let's shift our, f our focus a little bit because we've got this conference going on. I want to talk about Southern Africa, wider Southern Africa, because it seems wider Southern Africa's health care problems often become South Africa's yes. uh, health care problems. You have an idea of what's happening. Just paint us the picture. What's happening in Southern Africa? <clears throat> in Southern Africa, the health care uh, situation is quite... I mean, First of all, we share the same disease burden. Mm. Uh, we have the same illnesses with people from Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Botswana. And, and we find that they have very often 
less resources to cover their populations. And if you go to a hospital like um, Charlotte McLeague today, mm -hmm. Uh, especially on a Monday morning, you'll find many people from Mozambique, from mm. Zimbabwe coming here to add on the burden that we have already yeah. of our very sick, sickly people. So many of the neighboring countries are not doing well in healthcare. Mm. Uh, we happen, because our membership covers the seven southern countries, we happen to have an idea as to what mm. is happening there. The situation is not pretty. Yeah. And it impacts on what we're doing here in South Africa mm. for our own population. So the uh, situation is not good. We've got 9,000 healthcare professionals getting together at uh, Gallagher State uh, from uh, today. Okay, we're going to Cape Town. Cape Town? Yeah. See, yeah. this, this is my, inf yeah. my information. Yeah. is a bit dodgy, isn't it? Yeah. We, um, we, 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 we are descending on Cape Town on... On the weekend of the 15th and 16th, the mm. actual conference is starting on the Monday to Wednesday, 16th to the 18th. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the African picture, just how do we improve healthcare, generally speaking, on the entire continent? What do we need to do? Is it a, a fact that governments have to get together and, and intervene? Universal healthcare is the way forward. We've got, we cannot afford a situation where only a small percentage of people has all the resources of a country uh, being focused on them. Mm. We've got to spread it out. We've got to cover everybody. And um, it's a human right, as we know. Mm. It's declared uh, internationally by the UN and our constitution yeah. uh, concurs. So there's no other way. We don't have a choice in this. It's, we've got to be able to cover everybody in healthcare.